the last video, we got an overview of the incredible potential of pivot tables. In this video, we're going to look at some of the most important settings for making your pivot tables that little bit more user-friendly. So once you grow familiar with pivot tables, at some point, you'll probably want to link a formula to a pivot table. This is relatively straightforward. We can simply type an equals and make a reference to some point within the pivot table. But when I do that, I get this rather elaborate syntax. Excel automatically generates a formula called get pivot data. The get pivot data interprets information, such as uh, information about the table, what column is being used, and what row is used. But it does it relative to the pivot table, not relative to the cell reference. This is a very robust way of referencing a pivot table, but it does make it very hard to work with. If I wanted to perform just a simple multiplication, I have already two rows of formulas. So in some situations, it will be appropriate to turn this feature off. First of all, I'm going to escape from the cell to clear the information I've entered. Now I select my pivot table. I get a contextual pivot table tab. I go to analyze and then I enter my pivot table options. But without going into the main options, I can click on this drop down and find the generate get pivot data. With this feature turned off, I just click once, confirm that it is being turned off. And now when I reference the pivot table, I will get the simple A1, C1 referencing, or B6 in this case. I can then use it in the normal way with relative referencing or absolute referencing depending on how I want to work with the data. Another feature of pivot tables is whenever the data is refreshed, and I can do that, for example, by right-clicking and going to Refresh, Excel will automatically adjust the column widths of the table. It does that to shrink and expand to make sure it's accommodating for the data. Let's have a look at an example. In this situation, no visible change is apparent, but that is because I've left the pivot table in its default position. Let's say over time I decide to make some formatting changes and I change the column width manually to suit my own purposes. Once I then click refresh, Excel will make a small jump and readjust the column widths to the way it thinks is most appropriate. This feature can be useful, but it can also be irritating if you're trying to enforce a particular formatting on a particular spreadsheet. So to turn off this automatic adjustment, we need to go into our settings. I go to Analyze, find my options, and click on the main button to open this pivot table options window. I have a variety of different options here, but we're just going to narrow down on the important one for our purposes. The feature we're looking for is what is called Auto Fit Column Widths on Update. I'll simply uncheck this value and click OK. Now when I change the column widths to my own bespoke width and use the refresh command, no changes are made to the table. This gives me complete control over the formatting of the sheet. It is possible that some of you are viewing this video not as complete Excel beginners, but to get an update to the functionality available in Excel 2013. And you may be familiar with the older applications such as Excel 2000 or 2003. If you are such a user, you'll probably find the new pivot table style somewhat unfamiliar. The way that the formatting is laid out and the grouping is different. If you want to access the classic pivot table style, again we need to go into our options. With my cursor somewhere on the table, I'm able to display the pivot table tools tabs. I go to analyze and options. From here, I need to move to the display tab. From the display tab, I can now choose the classic pivot table layout and we'll notice it says enable dragging of fields into the grid. Let's try that option. At this point Excel is warning me that if I make a change to the formatting of the pivot table it's going to erase some of the data which is next to the table. As all of this data was just demonstration information anyway I'm happy for Excel to overwrite any cells that it needs to. As we can see my table grew by one column and some data was deleted. To remove any further confusion, I'll simply delete that data. 
We are now in our typical classic pivot table style, familiar to those who used Excel 2003. Instead of my data being condensed into one column, there are now separate columns that can be referenced individually. And I can even drag fields directly into the table as I was able to do so in Excel 2003 or earlier. There's one final feature worth mentioning in this section. By default, if Excel cannot find a value within the specified criteria, for example, July 2010 for Howard, it will simply print nothing. But for formatting preferences, we may want to display something in these cells, be it a simple zero or perhaps something like no data available. Again, let's visit our pivot table options. Here we see these two tick boxes and we can change the four empty cells show. By default, this is simply blank, but we could update it to, for example, a zero. Once I've made my change, I can just click OK. And the final pivot table option is to look at what to display with errors. In some situations, Excel may produce an error when calculating a pivot table. For example, with some situations where you're calculating an average. When that happens, a div O or a similar error message may appear on your pivot table. If you understand the error and it is not a problem with your data, you just simply want to ignore it, you can tell your pivot table to overwrite that error with something like, for error values, show NA. In this situation, Excel will replace any error values with the two letters NA. To test this error, I'm going to go back to my original data and see if I can cause an error. Let's find some information for Gill in August. It doesn't, in fact, matter which one I choose. I'm just going to take this value here and produce an error. No error is yet displayed because I have not refreshed my data. I right click and use the refresh button. We can now see a couple of errors have appeared on my sheet both in the grand total and the individual cell value. But instead of a divo value I see the custom text that I have added myself. Without this setting in place we'd simply see the standard Excel error message. Pivot tables are an incredibly powerful tool, and we've started to look at some of the functionality available. But the best way for you to learn how to use the pivot tables is to load up your own data and start experimenting. You can use the example data provided in this course, but I encourage you to use data from your own life, either from your own working situation or personal data that you want to examine in a summarized way. So go on, get stuck in with some pivot tables.